uh, this evening. The Independent Electoral Commission has uh, confirmed that former President Jacob Zuma's face will appear on the ballot for the Umkonto Isizwe party. This is despite the body's appeal to the Constitutional Court seeking clarity on a prior ruling on his eligibility for the May 29th election. Political analyst Professor Pamantla Zondi uh, joins us now for more uh, on that. Good to have you, Prof, and thank you very much for your time. Does the fact that the IEC has taken this decision that, well, look, we'll, we'll go ahead, put the face anyway, even though we are in court, in itself tell us of the predicament that the IEC is dealing with in ensuring that it doesn't endanger these elections and continues to appear to be impartial? Oh, oh yes, definitely. Uh, a lot is at stake uh, for this IEC. Uh, the South African IEC has acquitted itself very well uh, for over 25 years right now. And the current commissioners know how how high the standard is and how high the expectations are, and that they are held up to a, the highest of all values. So they have to act with great caution, thoughtfully, and they have to uh, guard their integrity very, very carefully. But in the process of doing that, they do also present themselves with risks, uh, including risk of being seen to be over pursuing certain things more than others, um, in panic, uh, being seen to be pushing uh, certain elements of their work a, a little too, too far. Uh, it's always huge, a huge danger that in the process of trying to do your best, that there will be some that you don't please, that there will be some that you please. And that's a, a biggest difficulty. Yeah. Where is that line? I mean, do you... Do you, do you feel, I mean, others would say they they are going beyond their uh, scope by this eagerness to want to disqualify a particular candidate uh, as opposed to helping and including parties to participate rather than be, be eager to disqualify them. Uh, it's important for them uh, uh, to just stick to the letter of the law that established them. Uh, because it, it explains the mandate, it explains their independence, it explains their integrity, it explains their conduct and their behavior. Um, let them uh, stick to the law and let the courts decide when they have erred that they have now erred. But it is wise of them in a very tricky political environment, competitive, com a very competitive uh, environment as we have right now, that they are kind of just stick to the law and play it by the book and very cool in all of that. But in the process, they need to really, really make sure that their communication is strong, their communication is good. What they need ultimately to have is a sense of support and acceptance by the general population so that if any of the political actors that are now uh, contesting this power may be unhappy, the general population would be able to defend the IEC for having acted with integrity in terms of the law and the constitution. Are the political actors deliberately dragging the IEC to, to the political space? I mean, of course, they're dealing with political parties. They're the IEC, it's voting season. It is political space, but in, in terms of the political contestations, are they dragging them there or is the IEC taking itself there with the kind of decisions, for example, that it would have taken, including those of, of challenging the outcome of the electoral court? Oh, oh yes, the, it is in the interest of political party. It is in their interest uh, to test, uh, to push the envelope and test the limits and, and rent the IEC and test its independence. Uh, it, is in, it, is, it, is, it is the nature of the system and where things are at this particular point where it's very stiff competition for every single vote that they should uh, push, the, push the IC one way or the other. And then whatever outcome it gives, it will please some and it might displease some. And I saw just now that there were small parties that were contesting why they were 
excluded. The IEC says you did not fulfill all the conditions, and this body says but you should have called us and said because we paid a deposit. Uh, where are your IDs and stuff like that? I don't think it's a job, job of the IEC. But I can understand why political parties would would shift the responsibility to the IEC. It is one that is at the center of things right now, and political parties need to explain their victories or explain their failures later on the basis of the behavior of the IEC. On the question of the commissioner, Commissioner Jen Love, uh, and and the 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 allegation, or at least the contestation by uh, MK Party that she is biased, the, the IEC saying, "Well, send us proof that that, that she's biased," and, and that's where they're leaving it, as far as that is concerned. Is that an adequate enough response? It it is it is it is. Um, I think part of the game of party politics that they singled out Janet Love. Um, uh, for criticism in this particular matter. It's very hard to be convinced that all of those commissioners uh, have no backbone and they can all be swayed by just one person. And um, it, it does play into in a sense that she is more powerful than others and one does not un fully understand whether, what is the basis for that. Uh, whether we can prove that the, she is able to propose everybody and they don't take decisions by consensus, I doubt that the position of this nature would have been simply be a mechanization of one individual. But from a political point of view, um, that, that those questions that are posed do not fully apply. It's not a, an area of logic, really. It's an area of power play. So you can really push the envelope stretch the truths and stretch the lines and, and, and push the boundaries. You don't really have to be logical all the time and steady and useful and gently mended. There's a little bit of rough part of politics as part of the art and the science of politics. I can understand how they kind of decide, oh, they could have literally said, oh, that the, the chairperson. I mean, if it had gone uh, 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 badly, uh, if it had gone the other way, you could have said, no, the chairperson is a, is a problem. He's the former uh, advisor to President Zuma, and therefore he's part of this game. And stuff. You can always pick up those, because in politics, perceptions do matter. You can base your decisions, base your undertaking and your position on, on perception. Um, outside that, you have to base everything on facts, on logic, on reason, and politics that doesn't doesn't have to limit itself to facts, uh, logic, and, uh, and and reason. So, at at what point does the IEC say, I, as Limezi and Matota, let's let the electorate decide? You know, uh, yeah, there might be legal issues, there might be uh, nitpicking here and there, but let's just put you on the ballot. Let the people then decide and 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 what's the line there between saying okay let the people decide and parties feeling that okay we were able to to push the IEC enough to have our way and maybe we can push them again even at the result point uh, the the IEC has to stick to the law and has to protect the integrity of the process and it has to protect its own integrity as well and to manage the politics, it, it has created a committee uh, where they, it, it gets into dialogue with political parties, where then it can handle the political messaging, the most political pressures, uh, political machinization, and, 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 and all of that. One has just to figure out how well is that party structure uh, uh, working, because it could help them take the steam of their more public role about decisions on the process of election, so that uh, things don't all move to the public arena. Some things are handled through the the, the platform that they long created uh, for political parties uh, to engage the IEC directly, privately, through a formal structure. When that doesn't work well, things can spill over to the and the IEC can ill afford to have to handle all the party political things in, in, in that mainstream process. 
because it could derail, it could plant perceptions about impartiality or lack of integrity, because perceptions matter in the end when judgments are made mm. about election outcomes, especially if election outcomes are, are strange, they are unusual, there's massive change. At that point, the IT does not want to be seen to have been a, 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 a referee and a player. Uh, parties must blame somebody else, must blame perhaps the media that did not give them sufficient coverage and perhaps uh, blame citizens for not uh, uh, making their choice correctly, blame the weather or stuff. But the IEC can't be blamed because when IEC is blamed logically and reasonably, then the integrity of the election is solid in a, in a big way. What's the likelihood of the, 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 the outcome of this uh, because of the handling of the candidacy of uh, former President Jacob Zuma and the MK party, uh, this resulting into a situation where you, you, you have, you know, the kind of attitude that uh, some have towards the, the Zondo Commission, for example, and whatever that report would have reported and the outcome of it, uh, it, 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 it seems to not find credibility and legitimacy with all South Africans. Uh, 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 and, and there is a portion of South Africans that even today, when you say, well, the Zondo Commission said this, they'll tell you that, no, that, that, that process was not credible. And we're going to end up with results, however they go, whether former President Jacob Zuma's party does well or the ANC does well, where people are going to say, well, you know, th th those outcomes are, are, are not something that we, we, we find credible. Whereas for the past five years, load shedding and service delivery generally were the biggest issues in the minds of people about politics. Suddenly, in the past six, seven months, it's this, the rise and the emergence of the MK has become a big issue. Both among those who take it lightly and underestimate um, its, its impact its influence on things, its bearing on the outcomes of elections, and those who recognize that. It is the biggest factor. It is the biggest threat to the INC ever um, in the current elections. And it is the biggest threat to the opposition parties as well, especially those political parties that go into the same constituency, the black middle class, the black working class, and the rural population. Uh, it's, a, it's a big factor. It might shape the outcomes in ways that we don't really fully realize. If you look at the pattern of the elections, uh, say the decline of the ANC by about 4 or 5% from election to election, uh, this uh, factor, this part, might lead to a jump in that factor of decline simply because of our awful of the fact that it emerged out of the ANC structures and it continues uh, to parasite on ANC structures, especially at regional and branch level. So we could find that it, instead of five, that the ANC now declined at six. Mm. And, and, and that would be a combination of each party and the challenges such as uh, 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 those shedding and so on. And therefore, whether we realize it or not, the outcomes of the elections and our debate about the outcomes of the elections thereafter, and whatever government is constituted after that, will have the MK at the center of that debate because it would have had an impact. But whether that impact is sustained, it's another case. But the fact that it would have made an impact, it would have shaped the next five years in, in, in significant ways. And I guess that is really why. We have these fights in courts right now. Yeah. We have this pressure on the IEC. Because if you think about it, um, the, those who fear the MK have to either defeat it at the courts, which is, we don't know how we're going to do it because it, it's very unclear where it is. It doesn't have formal structures and stuff. Like or you defeat it before elections using judiciary or extra judiciary means. It's, it's politics. It's, it's a co competition for power. It's not a game for sissies. It's a game for, for courageous uh, people and, and should expect sometimes the worst uh, of the 
political players in an environment of this nature. In that context, then, the role of the IEC becomes very, very, very tricky because if decisions could lead to the elimination of the MK as a factor, and therefore it is understood to have engineered the outcome of the elections by saving us from that change factor it could make, yeah. or if it does not do what it is doing now, it could be seen to have enabled the MK and the factor that is the outcome of the election. So it's damned if it does something, and it is also damned if it doesn't do anything. Sure. That is why it's important for us to just stick to the law, stick to the, the letter of the law, and, and play it by, by, by the book. I like the fact that the, in its appeal right now, it has simply asked the court, not on the matter of, uh, of Jacob Zuma, but it simply asked for clarity in relation to that section 43.1a of the uh, of the of the, ele- of, of the of the constitution to ask how it should be interpreted. So it's trying to stick to the matter of law and not be seen to be fighting any any political. But of course, in, in, inevitably, because it, it does touch on matters of Zuma, uh, those who, who, who support uh, Zuma would then see it as now entering the political fray, as others have said. Prof, as a student of, 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 of history, and I'm sure you have seen many, many uh, uh, election outcomes on the continent, uh, are we likely in South Africa for the first time to see uh, a, a situation where election results could be challenged in court, something that, you know, if you look at Zimbabwe, has been commonplace? <laughs> uh, don't, uh, don't rule out any possibility. You remember that for now, for about 10 years, more than a decade actually, um, South Africa has become accustomed to the process of drawing the courts to resolve political debates, to resolve political challenges and, and complexity. It is not in outside the realm of possibility that uh, should the outcomes that look like they might happen Surprise outcome, major change outcomes come that could lead to some uh, challenging uh, an outcome in court and asking the court uh, to uh, to rule on it. What we don't want to do is that that be brought about by a mistake made by the IEC. The IEC want to stay out of this, so it, whatever court case might arise must not arise out of the IEC and what it did and what it did not do. It must arise out of uh, contestations about results that came out because of how the parties moved and, and how they played their roles and, and so on. So, for example, if the people go to court and then one party ends up being pushed out and that manages elections, then that, 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 that might be taken up and the blame would be on some other party, but you don't want the IEC to be dragged in court over the outcomes of the elections. It can be dragged in court over processes before election, just to clarify things, whether like the parties that are now taking it to court over the fact that he, uh, you were excluded, you were uh, because you were not putting a list of that condition, that, that's okay, it, it's part of the, uh, the rule of law. But you don't want the IEC's mistake or action to be the reason why, uh, for the first time, the election results are challenged in court. Uh, they should not ever be challenged successfully because that would really harm both the IEC and our constitutional democracy in a significant way. Something completely related, but not necessarily directly with the MK party and uh, uh, the ANC. The the move we are seeing now with the five small parties putting their weight behind the patriotic alliance. Uh, these are small parties in the Western Cape with two seats in one council, uh, two seats in another, and, and so on and so forth, uh, making a huge dent on, on, on the democratic alliance in that province. The, the Western Cape, for the first time, 
and is on shaky ground. It is the first time now in over three elections that it has it, it, it is in a shaky ground. Um, the DA is now beginning to feel what the ANC feels as well, which is when things do not work out on the ground, when water is not flowing properly, when electricity is not uh, is not available all the time, uh, when unemployment is rising, when the crime is growing, uh, when violence is happening in community, and all of those kinds of things, it's natural to blame the ruling party in that area. Uh, irrespective of where the problems come from, whether failure or not failure, it, it's just one of the sins of incumbents. It's one of the prices of incumbents that while you take credit when things work well, you should accept that you will also be lambasted when things do not go well, even if the things were caused by weather or were caused by natural calamity. You still be blamed because that's the price of leadership. And the DA is beginning to face that. And the party is what you see that the party is doing. They are not creating a circumstance. They are taking advantage of the circumstance. There is growing disgruntlement in that province. Some of it builds around the idea of KP independence. Some of it builds around the idea of, uh, of, of, of service delivery in poorer areas. Some of it builds around the performance of the DA and all of those things. There's been disgruntlement building up over a period of time, and the political parties are opportunistic by design, are now taking advantage of this and have seen that there's an opportunity there to, to go in. I think the PA is doing that, the uh, Rise of Zanzi is doing that, uh, and, and a few other small parties are seeing an opportunity to get a piece of the of the Western Cape at a time when the DA is a big shame and, uh, and the current leader of the DA also does create opportunities for doing that. But you know, by attacking small parties and going, uh, and going very strong on Action SA, on, uh, on Patri Patriotic Alliance and all that, it has also caused them to want to fight the DA back. And how to fight the DA back? To fight it where it is in charge. And I think that is what it is. And this is like to dent uh, the, the DA's very uh, quite solid uh, control of the of, of, of the Western Cape. Don't rule out the possibility that the Western Cape could end up in a coalition too. Does this in in, in a way also affect the ANC hopes? Remember we spoke to you recently about the the, the Israel Palestine. Uh, effect on the the perception, especially of the important uh, colored vote in the Western Cape, moving away from the uh, from the DA and the ANC is hoping to capitalize on that. It seems to me that what you are seeing is that the DA is losing an element of its uh, of its power. Um, because of its performance, because of sentiment, because of disgruntlement, and so on. But it doesn't seem to me that that support is shifting back to the ANC. It seems to me that it is going to smaller parties, and which is why the smaller parties are like to make inroads. There. And that is how good party uh, has survived. Um, and, and that is how now it's going to be joined by Patriotic Alliance, joined by Rise and Zanzi, joined by other small parties parties um, in, in taking a little bit of this uh, DA support, it seems to me that the ANC might continue to languish uh, in, the, in, the, in this province because it, it will take quite a bit of time for it to uh, strengthen its own structures on the ground and, and, and rebuild the support in that area, especially in the colored communities. Prof, we appreciate your time and thank you for your intervention and your analysis this evening. Professor Somanda Zondi there helping us in that conversation. Right.